This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Don't cross out your eyes. It's about time for a cute Prius. Come on. <laughs> Especially with their flat ass, right? Yeah. <laughs> there it is right there. You recognize that voice? She became a huge reality star with the girls next door. Right. Um, uh, you, you may know Holly Sue Cullen. Uh, that's my real name. That's her real yeah. name. <laughs> As Holly Madison. She has a new book, Down the Rabbit Hole, Curious Adventures and Cautionary Tales of a Former Playboy Bunny. She was Hugh Hefner's number one girl, and she's here with us today. Holly, welcome to the show. Thanks hey, for having Holly. me, guys. Absolutely. You just missed King Los. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounded good. You heard him freestyling? Mm-hmm. You want to give it a go? You want to try um, freestyling? no. no you sure? <laughs> Come on, yeah. Holly. Bust it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. That's just, yeah, go, that go B. You want to do it? Go ahead. Check you it try out. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I would be the worst ever. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, real up on the beat. You know, I was reading through this book because I've always been a Hugh Hefner fan. What man hasn't? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you've heard this a thousand <laughs> times. And I've actually been by the Playboy Mansion mm -hmm. um, years ago um, just as a radio j uh, deep jock. It's a lot mm -hmm. of promotional things that happened there. Yeah. Di I didn't get a chance to go into the house, though. Mm. Oh, really? Nah, they wouldn't just let me backyard? in. Just the backyard? Just a backyard where the little zoo is. And, uh -huh. you know, they kind of kept me near the zoo. I thought they thought <laughs> no. I was like a monkey or something. <laughs> I don't slave. Know. Wow. <laughs> the, slave, the slave quarters. Yeah, yeah, they kept me through the gates, you know, and I, I couldn't get through it. Uh, but I, I wanted this book. I'm reading um, through your book. And my first question is, why did you decide to write this book? Well, you know, for so many years after I left the mansion, I didn't want anything to do with Playboy. I just wanted to start over, establish myself. And for so many years, I wouldn't talk about it. And people would be like, oh, do you still talk to Hef? And I'm like, no. And they'd want to know the story behind that. So then I felt like it was the elephant in the room that I could never get away from. And, you know, after, you know, examining why I made the decisions I did, I felt that maybe there'd be some people out there who could learn from my mistakes because I was in a bad relationship for a long time and, you know, didn't really have the courage to leave. Now, in, in the book, uh, in, in, in some of the excerpts, you, you, you talk about that, you know, being in that environment, you know, Hugh uh, at times would offer you drugs and mm -hmm. it was a, a very volatile environment and it was a lot of women being manipulated inside that environment. Mm. And, and I'm curious to being who he is and who he's always been. What did you expect? Like going into that environment. Like well, he has a really great veneer on the outside of his personality, a very gentlemanly, you know, nice guy type of thing. And it was definitely something I fell for hook, line and sinker. And, you know, all the girls that were involved in the situation made it out to sound like something very fun and very light. Because once you get into that situation, you know, there's a lot of things that go on that are embarrassing. and You don't want to admit to people like nobody admitted to sleeping with them. And, you know, everything just seemed um, very light. And I just thought it would be like a fun adventure. You, you slept with him the first night you met him? No, not the first night I met him. Well, how the first date? Uh, yeah, it was like the first night we all went out together. Okay, and um, what did you find him sexy? <laughs> did no, you find I was him? really <laughs> <in> <laughs> <heel>. <laughs> no, no, I was really intoxicated. I mean, I liked him personality wise at the time, but you know that was more where it was at. You me. say at the time you don't mm -hmm. like him now? No, I look back and I I just don't see somebody who's a very nice person. Mm. Okay. Or at least the way he treated me anyway. Everybody has their own experience. But you want it to be like inside of the Playboy magazine. Yeah, definitely. I thought it would be a great stepping stone. I thought it was something, you know, that seemed really glamorous to me at the time. Mm -hmm. you, you say, you say um, uh, I'm just paraphrasing that, you wanted to do a Playboy pictorial so you could become famous, but then it became... You, yeah, you, it got to a point, point where, you know, my self-esteem was so low and I was always made to feel, you know, by him that I was too ugly to be in the magazine. And it almost became like an obsession. Like I almost thought, you know, maybe I could become famous and then I could get into the magazine, which actually ended up happening, strangely enough. But it, it just got so warped, you know, my expectations and, you know, where my head was at. I really got in way too deep. Well, Holly, he put out a statement, which I'm sure you were anticipating. Mm -hmm. He said, over the course of my life, I've had more than my fair share of romantic relationships with wonderful women. Many moved on to live happy, healthy and productive lives. And I'm pleased to say remain dear friends today. Then he said, sadly, there are a few who have chosen to rewrite history in an attempt to stay in the spotlight. 
What's your response to that? Well, I'm definitely not rewriting history. Everything in my book is true, and it's my true experience. And as far as staying in the spotlight, I felt like it was important to share my story because it was kind of like this elephant in the room I couldn't get away from. But one thing I've learned over the years is I don't really like being famous for being associated with Playboy or being associated with Hugh Hefner. So, you know, even talking about it isn't really something I enjoy. I just kind of want to get, you know, my message and my true story out there. Okay. But it seems like you, you got a chance to eat the feast first and now right. complain about the food. Like you lived with him for years, right? You've been you were with him for a long period of time and you, you enjoyed mm-hmm. the accolades that came along with it, right? You became famous. You know reality it, TV it, show. A lot of money I'm sure was around it, you know, and, and now it just feels like uh some people are gonna say, Well, you laid your bed, you should just lie in it. Yeah, I mean, definitely people come at me and say that, you know, when they see like a headline or an excerpt. But, you know, the book's over 400 pages and I take responsibility for all my own decisions. So I think if people read the whole story, they'll understand where I'm coming from and that good things definitely came out of the situation. But there was a lot of bad, too. And the bad part's always been hidden. Okay, so here's what I imagined. Mm -hmm. Okay, so (laughs) okay, so it's you, Bridget, Kendra, Hugh Hefner and... There's like foursomes going on. Like, were those, <laughs> was that happening? Like, were you in multiple um, situations where you had multiple sex partners in that situation? I in mean, the- that was kind of the setup, but, and this is all detailed in the book too, but none of the girls were really into it. They were all kind of like pretending with each other. Really? Mm, yeah. So, but y'all were going through it. You right. still were going through the motions. So there was sexual activities. I read in the book that he would never finish, that he would like, ejaculate afterwards is that true yeah like by himself by himself so it'll be a lot of f- paint the picture how are you here <laughs> it's all in the book sell i can't give book. away all of give it yeah. sell <laughs> sell a book. girl you gotta sell the yeah, book that's 200 pages <laughs> give but me that example. is a lot give of me, it give yeah me a scenario like a scenario well i mean like the first night i went up there it was like a lot of girls and they were all kind of like you know putting on a show and going through the motions and i always kind of felt like if smartphones had been around back then they would have been holding one on the other side when hef wasn't looking looking at their phone because they were all like making fun of the situation or talking and you know they're creating like this silhouette but yeah. everybody you know all the girls were weren't really into it and wanted to get it over with as soon as possible. Hmm. I should like half would be to act like the man in bed though. I mean, he had his own routine, his own. He's everybody likes different things. Three hundred years <laughs> old, and I'm the only person that's like this motherfucker's ninety. What do you mean the man in bed? Forty year olds ain't even acting right. You talking about a ninety year old? Please, sway shut up. I got to get into Holly's business about something else. <laughs> All right, so let's just say this whole thing. Wait a minute, thing, Heather. I'm sorry, no, Sway. No let's just say this whole thing was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Like you just say you look back now and, you know, you kind of wanted to do it for this reason. And you just, we all make mistakes, mm-hmm. Holly. But now that you you have a family now, you have a daughter, you, 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 you know, what do you tell her? Because we're in a generation where, you know, you my kid, if, you know, if I ever have kids, they could Google my name and shit will mm-hmm. pop up. What are you going to tell your daughter when that happens? You know, how do you break this down to her? Well, my daughter was one of the reasons I wanted to write the book and, you know, tell my story and explain why I made the decisions I made and what I learned through those decisions. And I hope that she can learn through my mistakes as well. Would you let her pose like to say, if, you know, when she's. No, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Mm. That whole lifestyle, though, right. isn't a good idea, is it? Like, yeah, isn't it I, I mean, dirty? I don't think so. It's different for everybody. But, you know, I feel like it wreaked havoc on my self-esteem for a long time. I really mm-hmm. lost my self-worth and really, you know got lost in that for a number of years. Veronica over there is an intern who mm-hmm. dreamt of becoming a, a play. Yeah, a actually I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. When I was like 16, I was like, I'm going to move to California and I'm going to be a playmate and I'm going to strike it big. And um, after I started reading your book, I was like, wow, I'm actually kind of thrilled that I didn't do that. Thank you. Um, I also have a question in regards mm-hmm. to, you know, you do mention some attempts of suicide and, you know, depression. So how did you actually like get through that and, you know, just to counter that, what is the book mainly out there to try to help other young women who are aspiring to do the same things you did? Yeah, I would love it if people could read my story and learn from my mistakes and maybe not make the same mistakes I did or realize, you know, that they can take charge of their lives sooner than I did and get out of bad relationships and not feel branded by decisions they made. What, 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 which way did you attempt suicide? Well, I never attempted suicide, but I felt suicidal. I just okay. felt like yeah, I'd made a really bad decision and, you know, branded myself for life and couldn't really live up to it or face up to it and was miserable in the situation. Hmm. Now, if he called you mm-hmm. and he offered you an apology, would you be willing to accept it or is it just too much damage done? 
I mean, I, yeah, I just don't, I, I don't think he could ever accept that he made me feel the way he did because he's the type of person who surrounded himself with yes people for 60 years and kind of has, I think, a delusional sense of who he is and how he treats people. <laughs> What about Kendra and Bridget and all the Are y'all still, do y'all communicate? Are y'all friends? I'm friends with uh, Bridget, but not Kendra. Why not? Well, um, I write about our falling out in our book, but the, maintaining the relationships with the other women were always important to me because we did have that shared experience that whether, you know, some of them want to admit it or not is kind of a traumatic experience. And, you know, Kendra just got kind of attitude with me one day and, you know, I didn't want to put up with it. So. You talk about like the competitiveness in the mm -hmm. household, especially when the cameras were on, it was like people were fighting for airtime. What was the worst scenario you could recall from that happening? I mean, actually when the TV show was filming, Bridget and Kendra and I got along pretty well and the show really brought us together and provided us a lot of fun opportunities. So it was more like the three of us against the world. But before when there were six girls when I first moved in, it was just a lot of cattiness, you know, girls making up lies about me to try and get me in trouble. You know, everybody's trying to get everybody else kicked out, basically. And everybody kind of lived in fear of getting kicked out because I think once you make the decision to go there and, you know, realize, you know, what it cost you and, you know, mm. your self-respect, you kind of want to get something out of the situation or at least last there for a little while, and it was very competitive. Would you consider it a cult in a sense then? Like you were brainwashed? Not like I was brainwashed, but I definitely, um, I mean, I was made to feel like I was ugly and not worthy, and I definitely bought into that. Got it. What, so what, what you, like your six, your seven girls all together were living there at one mm -hmm. point, and, and he was sleeping with all seven? Yes. A lot of the girls wouldn't admit it, though. None of the girls would admit it. So did you stay in your own room or you stayed in a room with him since you was the number one girl? Well, at first I had my own room, but then I shared a room with him. And then you shared it. Mm -hmm. And so when he would leave at night for a couple of hours, you knew he was banging out one of the other girls. No, because it never happened like that. It was always everybody all together. And it was always like on the nights we went out, Wednesdays and Fridays. It was never a surprise. And it was always the same. Hmm. You know, in street slang, they call <laughs> that the, they would call you the bottom <laughs> you, you know what that means, right? Like pimps and the, the girls. I know that work what that with... means in the gay world, but not the pimp world. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all was doing that too? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, 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 the bottom bitch is the, the, what they call them is the main girl, the number one girl. You know, And it seemed like that's what the infrastructure he set up it was like he got all these <laughs> women in one right. house. And, and you guys were hanging in there for whatever reasons, fame, fortune. Did you walk away with any money? I mean, we made some money off the TV show and I was able to save a little bit. But when I was there, I was mostly concerned with like paying off student loans and credit card debt and things like that. Because I came there straight from college. It wasn't as much money as people would think. Uh -huh. Everybody thinks, you know, you walk away with like millions of dollars and you have it made and everything like that. But I basically, you know, wanted to start from scratch when I left and, you know, make a name for myself. And for so many years, I wouldn't even talk about my mansion years. And I would just kind of like brush everything off with a polite answer. Yeah. And that's why I didn't talk about it for so long. Okay. I feel like I remember an episode um, of Girls Next Door where you guys actually went to go visit your family, your parents, right? Um, Yeah, my parents and the girls and I, but not half, went to Alaska to go visit where I grew up. Got you. Mm -hmm. um, throughout all these years, and I'm not sure, did you confide in them a little bit? Did you hint that oh, you were unhappy? absolutely not, because I was too embarrassed by what went on, and that's just not the type of stuff I talk to my parents about, yeah. so definitely not. But what was their reaction overall with you living there? I mean, I've always been kind of one of those kids that do what I want, so they know they can't really tell me anything. But, you know, um, I never confided in them that anything was wrong. I think a lot of the girls' parents kind of got the impression that they were just staying at the mansion while they modeled or something. Okay. Are you angry with him? I'm not angry. You know, writing the book wasn't about trying to get a reaction or having an axe to grind or anything like that. I just wanted to share my story for my own sake and hope that other people can learn from my mistakes and at least understand where I'm coming from. Holly Madison, you're a beautiful woman. Thank good, you. Good, uh, here in person. And, uh, man, you peeled back the curtain on the she Playboy Mansion, man. <laughs> My gosh. The things I read in this book. <laughs> so Hugh would get naked in front of you? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Bro, I mean, it would be dark uh, in the room, but. Hell yeah, it got to be dark. <laughs> This motherfucker old as hell. I'm not. I'm not getting it, yo. But what? It, it sounded like he was extremely sexually active at his age. Like, Pills, probably for his age. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was always open about being a big Viagra user. Costco size. Uh, Costco size. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like Mike and Ike. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, sex with Hugh Hefner. That's like guys put notches on their belt. 
Is that a notch on your belt early on? I wish a- women could put notches on our belt, but that's not how society views it, sadly. Suspended. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Holly Madison, down the rabbit hole. Curious adventures and cautionary tales of a former Playboy bunny. Yo, get the book. Trust me. It's so interesting from front to back. And uh, it's hard to put down. Holly, congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks Take for care. Me on, guys. It's sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.